In 2023, our bilateral relationship had two major milestones, the bicentennial of US-Chile relations and 50 years since a military coup overthrew Chile's democratically elected president. With only three and a half months from my arrival until the start of the year, there was a lot for our team to sort out together. We decided to start by introducing me to the people of Chile. Of course, I did all of the formal, official diplomatic meetings and protocols, but we wanted to develop a strategy for me to communicate directly with the public. We strove to establish a personal brand for me of a serious, smart, experienced diplomat, but accessible and down to earth. Our communications were designed to clearly explain our policy priorities, while also demonstrating my genuine personal interest in Chile, its people, and its culture. Our postings were interactive, encouraging people to engage with me directly and create a dialogue. Thanks to the incredible work of our PD team, I became a recognized entity throughout Chile, and our messaging gained hundreds of thousands of views and engagements. The bicentennial of our relations offered a clear and definitive marker of a long-standing relationship. We centered our campaign around a slogan, Partners for a Better Future, Socios para un Futuro Mejor. We radiated this theme from every single aspect of our relationship, economic, political, security, military, academic, scientific, people to people, and more. Every single section and agency in Embassy Santiago embraced this branding and used it to thread our activities together. We also asked partners like AmCham to use the logo to act as force multipliers. The logo and slogan became so ubiquitous that the government of Chile adopted the slogan for use at bilateral events and polling indicated that a remarkable 34% of Chileans were aware that 2023 was the 200 year anniversary of US-Chile relations. I'm not even sure that 34% of the State Department's Western Hemisphere Bureau knew that. So the fact that 34% of this country knew it was really a testament to the work that this team did. The 50th anniversary of the coup the same year was a significant challenge. We knew that any engagement entailed a great deal of risk for the United States, for the embassy, and for me, the ambassador, as the messenger. Skeptics believed that our engagement would raise unpleasant questions about the US commitment to democracy and human rights. But I and the embassy team strongly believed that we needed to proactively engage if we wanted to retain any credibility and influence in Chile, particularly with the current government. Also, it was the right thing to do. Transparency was paramount, and we worked closely with Washington stakeholders on the declassification and publication of key U.S. documents related to the coup, including the presidential daily brief from the day of the coup, which had remained classified for 50 years. We initiated a grant to translate these documents into Spanish and make widely available an additional 23,000 previously declassified documents related to that period of time, to make more information accessible to the Chilean public and to allow Chileans to make their own decisions about the role of the United States during that period of time. The 35th anniversary of the 1988 plebiscite in which Chileans voted to return to democracy. Then U.S. Ambassador Harry G. Barnes Jr. led a change in U.S. policy in favor of democratic elections and human rights. He pushed back against Pinochet and he is a revered figure in Chile for the risks that he took to support Chileans who were fighting peacefully to return to democracy. But we realized that his actions and the role of the United States in helping Chile transition back to democracy were being forgotten with the passage of time. We lobbied the Department of State to officially name the Chief of Mission Residence Barnes House. On the October anniversary of the plebiscite, our mission-wide team gathered Chileans and U.S. citizens who flew down to Chile, some of them for the first time in 35 years, to celebrate the naming and pay tribute to the Chileans who resisted the dictatorship. While making this documentary, I discovered the profound conviction in the values of democracy and human rights, contrasting with the stories I heard in my childhood about the U.S. support for dictatorial regimes in Latin America. This story demonstrates once again that high diplomacy is more effective than war in resolving conflicts. Ambassador Mihan had the vision to highlight this message 
as she herself practices it today as we begin the third century of our bilateral relationship, a new perspective emerged on the role of the United States in Latin America and the world as a steadfast defender of democratic values. I am so lucky to be a part of instances like that because it, it strengths my leadership that many times we don't know we have or that we're not using to its full potential. Uh, now I can contribute to my country in ways that before I couldn't, using the cultural exchange and the knowledge those six weeks gave me. I was even, uh, I also had the opportunity, for example, uh, to be granted a mini grant. And now, which I, which I use to fund a program here in Chile that gives young girls the skills and political empowerment, they need to be the leaders of the future. That's how much these kinds of programs can impact because I was not only myself, the person that was impacted by this initiative, but also my community and the girls that uh, were privileged to be in this program that uh, I created. Opportunities like that can open a whole new world to a young woman like me, and I'm sure it will open to many more. One of the most wonderful things that we found is if you can create a viral moment in social media, traditional media doesn't want to be left out of what's going on in the conversation. So you have infinite amount of earned media right for free which is which is really amazing um, and so we learned ways to use that echo chamber to our advantage our media team here has been so creative in creating some of those viral moments those interactive moments that blend sort of the difficulty of the negotiations and some of the hard positions that we had to take when negotiating this arrangement with our chilean partners uh, with some of the lighthearted moments that that um that are produced from it. Uh, so I think it's all about finding that right combination of how you message and you can make any topic seem interesting and engaging. But what we've done here at the embassy that we're really proud of, and I know lots of embassies do the same, is making sure that we're linking our exchange programs to our strategic country goals. Uh, so when we say here are the hard policy objectives that we're looking to achieve in Chile, we look to public diplomacy tools, including exchanges going both ways, to further advance those goals. Uh, so for example, um, security is an area where we spend a lot of time focusing with our Chilean partners. And this brings in some of those agencies that you were referring to before um, that don't necessarily engage in the art of public diplomacy, so to speak. The DEA, the FBI, the Department of Justice. Um, so our public diplomacy team sits down with them as they're mapping out their strategic priorities for the year, and we understand what our budget and resource priorities are, uh, and works to say, if we have three main country goals in our integrated country strategy, you know, our strategy document, how do we use exchanges to further advance those goals? I feel like so much of public diplomacy, the key is you can't pull it out into, um, into silos, right? Public diplomacy is at its most effective when it's embedded with policy, uh, with all of the communications, with all of the programs, with all of the policy objectives. Uh, the government of Chile undertook a project uh, that was focused on misinformation and disinformation, though primarily in the domestic context, not foreign uh, interference. And so we linked this uh, with a visit from then Undersecretary uh, of Public Diplomacy, Liz Allen. Um, and we had her come to Chile. This is an area where she was an incredibly effective messenger. Uh, they recognized that she had global heft and weight on this issue. Uh, and so this is where we reached out to Washington to say, look, this is something that underpins all of the work that we do here, but we don't have the expertise and the resources to focus on it in a full-time manner. Would you send down a senior official to help jumpstart the conversations we're having with the government of Chile? So the undersecretary came down. It was an incredibly productive visit, uh, and that provided sort of a, a spring pad for us to continue um, with those particular efforts. In other initiatives, like the naming of the Barnes House, uh, again, with the creative solutions offered by our management colleagues, we realize that there are pots of money in the Department of State that don't necessarily correspond directly to PD work. Um, but if you can be creative and truthful and transparent about explaining what your mission is, different pots of money suddenly become open to you. Uh, and so this is where I would encourage public diplomacy teams to make sure that they're incorporating areas of the embassy that you wouldn't necessarily think are the public diplomacy hot. Uh, because they have a wonderful way of, of feeding input into the process. And frankly, not just on money, on ideas, on what the key audiences that they're targeting are looking for, how they're consuming their information.